So I'm going to say one more time. There's absolutely nothing wrong with driving a bus. My mother Gloria drove one for years. But could it be that black America has been sold a narrative of average, regular, and typical being good enough for us? Hmm. Well, see, that's called white supremacy. And in this case, it takes the form of conditioning black Americans to happily accept being a permanent American underclass. But see, because I know the truth about black folk in America, no, average is not and will never be good enough for me. And the gag is, I don't think it's good enough for you either. Mm. So, Ebony Williams, bus drivers should be single and lonely and never... Because <laughs> that's average. And ah, it, Your take. I, I, and again, that, I don't know if that's my full opinion. So, your take. Well, first of all, her eyebrows are distracting. Since she wants to go after <laughs> excellence, let's get some excellence with those first. Uh, but, you know, she never actually talked about the character of the man. So it would then allude to the fact that you are a gold digger. What if this bus driver was happy? What if this bus driver came home every evening? What if this bus driver's average check paid for you to have a place to stay and food to eat and, and, and clothes on your back? What if this average bus driver was a good father? So she never talked about his character. She assumed that because he had what she considered an average job, that he wasn't a good man. So when you equate uh, someone's paycheck with who they are, it does make you look like a gold digger. It does make you look like you don't have any real type of conversation and any real argument. What she said was dumb because this average man could be a good man. And that is why she is almost 40 years old and she's by herself. And I don't know what Kevin Samuels would say, but she needs to look into becoming the spokesperson for the Rose because that's all she's going to have with that type of condescending talk towards black men. She's not going to have anything. I think Kevin would have gave her that little sound he would give when he would hang up on people and just know that they're beyond help. Because for her to double down on what she said, even after talking to Iyana Van Zandt, she may be beyond help. So let's move on to the next person. Shamika, what if my position when I watched this early this morning is that, hey, she's being completely honest and revealing the nature of women. Women want a provider and a provider at a level that makes them comfortable. And so she's a lawyer, uh, she has no kids, she's used to living a certain lifestyle, and she wants a man that can provide for her at that lifestyle. Yeah, she, she didn't unpack it properly, but that's basically what she's saying, that in, within her nature, she's looking for a provider. And, and, and so, I don't like what she said. She should be looking for character and all these other things. But women are always going to prioritize, can this person provide for me at a level that I'm comfortable? That's going to be first and foremost. Men have a different nature. And it's like, is this woman going to be loyal to me? Is she going to be supportive of me? I will provide for her if she's loyal to me, supportive of me, and a good parent for the kids that we produce. And so we don't care about, we're not sitting around, it's her job, well, it used to be, it's in men's nature. We're not sitting around thinking, is she gonna be able to make sure that you know I can take the vacation I want, I can wear the shoes I want, I can wear the designer clothes I want, I can blah, blah, blah. We're like, now nah, I got that, I'll handle that. And so I, I just think she's revealing the nature of women. It's not in woman's nature to want to provide for or maintain a man. And so she's just keeping it real.